Hello everyone and welcome back to another Things You Should Know About Pugs. Today we're going to discuss something which is probably the most important thing when getting a pug and that's the cost. The first thing when you're going to buy a pug is you need to decide if you're going to buy a pug or you're going to buy something that's like a pug. Because if you specifically want a pug then I would highly recommend getting an actual pug. No, don't like you know jugs, dugs, bugs, all them crossbreeds I would, if, if you really want a pug, avoid crossbreeds. Crossbreeds are a lot cheaper and there's kind of a reason for that because you get traits from other dogs whereas a pug's traits and everything it's got with it as a whole is kind of like a perfect little package. Whereas you do, if you get it crossed with a chihuahua it might bark, it might yap, you know there's, so if you're going to get a pug I would recommend like a full pedigree, probably KC registered pug. Now, depending on kind of where you are, I'm in the UK, so obviously this is going to be in pounds, so I'm sure you can try and convert if you're from America or any other place in Europe or whatever. But over here, you can't, it depends whether you're north or south, because in the, in the southern part of the UK, it's definitely more expensive for dogs. It's the same with everything, really, in the UK, like cars and houses, everything's more expensive. So we're from, like, the very top of England, like, borderline with Scotland. There's a breeder up here in Carlisle, um, at the top of the UK, which... They go for between a thousand and one thousand two hundred, depending if you want a male or female. And they're full pedigree, Casey registered, they're perfect. Um, what I'll do is I'll link her in the description because if you are looking for a pug from the UK, she is quality breeder, and I would highly recommend. Her. Obviously, you've seen Pablo, you see what her pugs are like. They're all perfect. They're all like that. So, but if you are looking for a pug, I would say the price kind of range in general would be from about sort of your eight nine hundred pounds to sort of your fifteen hundreds and if you're really wanting like a show dog then a lot more but i'm sure you're just here for a pet but obviously we just wanted him as a pet we weren't bothered about showing him or anything like that so we didn't want to really get like we didn't want to pay excessive amounts of money for him so we paid about a thousand pound for pablo which was sort of at the lower end but you can see what a quality dog he is for that lower end you know that's kind of the pugs that vicky sells you know that ideal if a pug is cheaper than say like eight hundred pounds, there's maybe a reason for it. I'm not saying there is. You know, there might be breeders out there who sell them for less because they're not too bothered on the money, or pugs have had babies and they just don't want them. You know, there's lots of reasons why. But I would just watch out for maybe some crossbreeding further down the line because pugs are renowned for health problems, and if you don't pay the money for the right one, then health problems are going to be a definite issue, and you're going to spend way more money. So it'd be better paying another three hundred pounds for the pug than paying thousands of pounds down the line when it needs a, something done with it, do you know what I mean? So that's in terms of buying the dog. In terms of what you need actually for them, isn't probably that much of a cost. Main, the main cost is obviously purchasing them. You're going to need the basic stuff, so you're going to need beds, towels. You can use old towels though, so you know there's a lot of things you can recycle. Toys, we used a lot of old bears that we used to have from when we were like kind of kids and that, so we gave them a lot of them. But in terms of like chew toys and all stuff like that, it doesn't really cost a lot. In total, I think for us with like his crate, we built his pen, we got his beds. You know, we went to pets at home and we didn't buy the cheapest of stuff, but we didn't buy the most expensive stuff by all means. So we spent about £200 getting kind of everything we needed for him to begin with. So you're looking at that on top of the cost of the pug. So, you know, obviously it varies. It depends what you're getting. But in terms of after you bought the pug, so about £200 to get everything you need and sufficient enough stuff. You know, you don't want to buy cheap stuff because he'll rip it apart, he'll bite it, chew it. So you've got to be cautious of getting tough stuff but not buying too expensive stuff that's going to get ruined. So a month between me and Chelsea, we put £100 away a month. Now we pay £50 each into like a joint account and then we just buy what we need for him. And that that's sufficient enough. We don't ever, that bank account never gets low. We've, we just go and spend... You know, it's it's accumulating money. It's actually like, you know, we're technically saving in that account because it's not we're not spending it all at all. So in terms of monthly upkeep costs for a pug, there's only really like three things that you'd be really buying: food and treats. You'll be paying for his vet bills, and you will be can't remember his insurance. His insurance. Obviously, being a pug, we are cautious that he is susceptible to, you know, health issues. So the thing we definitely wanted to do was make sure we had a good insurance for him. Now, you can get like insurance for £3 a month, which if you want £3 a month insurance, that's fine. 
no, I'm not knocking anything of that. But that's kind of only covers accidental cover. Well, obviously, we're aware that he does have breathing issues. So we went for like, I think we pay about £20 a month, which isn't like excessive insurance because some of them are a lot more. But that kind of covers, I think it's something like seven different illnesses or diseases, and it's about four grand per illness or injury per year. So basically, paying £20 a month, we could potentially get something ridiculous like £22,000 worth of vet bills from our insurance just by paying £22. So £20 isn't a lot to pay a month, but if anything does happen, then you're covered. If you want a pug or just any type of dog, you can't be trying to save money and skimp. You've got to, he's got to be a priority. He's got to be where all your money goes. You know, the stuff I don't buy for myself, knowing that Pablo might need something. I always keep that money spare. So having good insurance is kind of key, really, to not forking out a lot of money. Because if you save on, so if you buy like cheap food and you don't really pay much for his insurance, you take him to uh, a not very good vet and that's, you know, they're quite not bothered about him and they don't really check him properly, then you could be looking at saving, you're saving money. But for how much health issue might cost, that extra money you've been saving won't be the same as what you're going to be paying for a vet bill. So I'd highly recommend some good insurance. But like I said, that was only about £20 a month. Now in terms of vets, we're in like a puppy thing with the vets. So we pay a standing order of... £12. £12 a month. So for that £12 a month, we're getting free health checks. We're getting his toenails clipped. We're getting his vaccinations and all the stuff we need. So for £12 a month, you're getting kind of a lot of stuff there, which when they're giving him a full health check over, they can check his weight, you know, make sure he's eating right, they can give us advice. So it's all about getting the right thing. What you don't want to be doing is just, you don't, you want a vet that's kind of going to properly look after him and check him over. We're at quite a, a family run business vet rather than one of these like mainstream vets, which, you know, not to name any names, but I'm not keen on then really I wanted somebody who's going to look after Pablo and not just be there to kind of get money from him. There you are. Thank you. So the last thing is a monthly cost would be his food. So we feed him Royal Canine Food. Now, that's not the top luxury brand, but it's not like a cheapo one from a supermarket. You know, it's £20 a bag, it's four kilo bag. But we're feeding him 150 grams a day, so you're looking at that bag will last about 25 days, I think, 26 days, the math is gone. So you're looking at once a month for that. So in terms of monthly costs, we're paying 20 pounds for his food, 20 pounds for his insurance, and like 15 pounds for his vets. So all in all, you're looking at 55 pounds a month, and that's for kind of some good quality stuff where he's gonna be fine. The last thing in terms of cost though, is something that can't really be calculated, and it all depends on your own circumstances. And that depends on what he destroys. Now when getting a puppy, any puppy, not just a pug, they are going to bite things, they are going to destroy stuff. We've already thrown out three or four of Pablo's beds because he's chewed them, ripped them, weed and pooped on them. He hasn't pooped on them, weed on them. And they just smelt, so we we'll have to throw them out and just get a new one. He's scratched up all my car seats. He's chewed shelves, he's chewed shoes. We've kind of tried to let him roam free, and it does work. You know, it does work letting him roam free. The only problem is he obviously has been biting stuff when we've not been there, like skirting boards. So obviously stuff like that can't be calculated because everybody's circumstance is going to be different. So you could be looking at a total for buying a pug and getting everything set up and that. You could be looking anywhere between £1,200 to about £1,700. I would say that would be about your range for setting him up, getting everything from buying him or her getting everything you need and setting up a monthly cost, you know, you'd be looking at anywhere between 1300 to 1700 pounds. So they are quite a bit of money, but I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, we spent quite a lot of money on him, but he's our absolute world and I'd have paid more for him. Simple as that. He's, oof. but you could be looking at that kind of cost for a pug. But at the end of the day, if he chooses your fridge door, how much is a fridge door to replace? So the main cost of a pug really is depending on his attitude and what he chooses, but yeah he has fair scratch my car seat so if i was looking at getting them done through audi and getting them getting a full 
like refurbishing them chairs, I'd be looking at over a thousand pounds. Now that's just as much as he costs. I was expecting it, and that's fine. You know, I'm not bothered about there being scratches on the seats, but someone might be, and that might be the added cost. So you've got to really consider that it's not just a case of I have one thousand five hundred pounds, I'm going to buy a pug, because there is added costs onto there, which obviously people sometimes don't tell you about. Like he chews through your handbag, you need to buy a new one of them. Now you don't necessarily think that's him. But it's still something you're gonna to have to buy, and if you need it for work or whatever, that you're gonna to have to, and that's just what it is. That's gonna be it for the cost today. What I'll do is I'll just put a little reference chart at the end, um, to kind of just put together what I was saying and kind of how much things are, so what you'd be looking at depending on if you've got male or female or full pedigree and all stuff like this. But if you liked the video and found it interesting, or you learned something, or you just anything, drop a like is much appreciated. Then if you're new. Subscribe, there will be plenty more of these coming and plenty more of Pablo as well. Peace out.